Bookworm family, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Danny. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell because I'm posting lots and 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 lots since I can't go anywhere anyway. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, please be sure to do that. It is at the underscore dancing underscore bookworm. I post on there, full reviews and content. Bam. All right, so today, if you are in the sixth through eighth grade book club, we are discussing section two of True Confession. True Confessions by Janet Tashijan. Tashijan. Never gonna be able to say her last name. Um, but if you have no idea what we're talking about, click the link up above or click the link down below in the description box to find out more about our reading club. If you um, are interested in it, you can definitely pick up and follow along where we are right now. But we are on section two out of three sections, so we are pretty far ahead, but you are more than welcome to go ahead, do it at your own pace, and follow the videos at your own pace. They will not be taken down. I will leave them up. So there will be a whole playlist for True Confessions if you go to my playlist, and you can just follow along at your own speed. Anyway, so if you are here for the second section of True Confessions, we have gotten to the part where True is working tediously to create the perfect show for the contest. How after, after her first attempt, she isn't too successful. She kind of makes this boring documentary where just a doctor is talking and people don't really like it. So that's when she gets the idea to follow Eddie around with the camera all day and just kind of record real life with somebody who ha who was born with asphyxia. And um, she starts to wonder if people are going to like Eddie on camera or if they're going to turn it off. So that is where we're at right now. Our word of the week is unified. So it talks about how True and Eddie are on a unified soccer team for people. It's another word also that can be used as integrated soccer team where people who are considered typical and people who have special needs end up being on one team or in one class or anything like that. That is what integrated means. Um, so unified means to become whole. And it says when the boys and girls teams unified as one soccer team, they became unbeatable. When is the time you were part of a unified group? So I was part of a unified group. So I used to be a preschool teacher and I taught in an integrated classroom. So I was a part of working with people who had special needs and people who were considered typical students. So um, yeah, that was the time that I was part of a unified group. Although I have many, many more instances of when I was part of a unified group because it is just like my whole life has been a part of being integrated and unified and I love that and my mom had always worked with people with special needs so it just kind of always was a part of my life which is awesome so anyway let's jump into the section two questions so the first question is what two cartoon characters does True think her brother's like in the section it's on page 55 it says things I hardly think about when I'm bored things I think about when I'm bored but I hardly have time anymore number four says I think about if Eddie were a cartoon character, he would be a cross between the Tasmanian Devil and Goofy, laughing while he makes a giant mess. And I can say that that's my nephew, too. My nephew 100% is that person. Uh, number two is, what is the overall reaction to True's first attempt at her contest, contest entry? Everyone gives it a big thumbs down. They think it is boring. Even True thinks it's boring. Number three, what is Eddie naturally good at? True says that Eddie is naturally good at soccer. Um, so, True says that Eddie is naturally good at soccer. They're playing and she says that he's really able to stay focused. He knows how to look ahead and dribble the ball at the same time without having to like look down at his feet like other people on the team and he's just really, really good at playing soccer. And they have kind of like a twin apathy thing going on where she just knows that he's open and she can pass the ball to him without having to look up, so. Um, number four is what game does Eddie and True make Mrs. Hannah play? They make her play Monkey Man and Mrs. Hannah was not ready for that. It's kind of this crazy game where they just run around like wild people. Number five, what country are True and Eddie learning about when their mom takes them to the beach? So I thought this was really cool, but their mom has them learn about a country for an entire month. And then they like have like a meal from that country and they do an activity from that country kind of thing. I think that's really, really cool. Um, but they say that they are learning about Australia when they go to the beach. Number six, what is the significance of the date April 19th? That is the day that True's grandma dies and that's the day that they go to the beach and True was, thought it was really weird that they were going to the beach because normally they just do stuff at home. So they went to the beach and True realized like it was the day that her grandma passed away. So it was a really hard day for her mom. 
Number seven, what did Billy and his friends do to the hat they gave Eddie? This was like the meanest. I hated every second of this part of the book. I wanted to throw the book, but they peed in the hat that they gave Eddie. So they gave Eddie a hat after him and all of his friends peed in it. That's disgusting, rude, stupid, and it instantly made True stop liking Billy Meyer, which is good. But I was so livid when I read that part. Number eight. Where is True's father really? So we find out True's father is not in Africa. She just tells people that he's still in Africa. He was there for a little while after they were born, but he actually moved to Rhode Island and has a different life in Rhode Island and just never came back home to his kids, which is really sad. And True has a hard time accepting that, but her mom also gets really frustrated that she lies and tells people that he's in Africa. Number nine, write down a TV show plan for someone in your life that you would follow around all day. What would the show be about if they were the star? What would you need to do to capture them, capture their real life? So I didn't have a chance to write this down, but I think if I could pick somebody to follow around for the day, I'd probably pick like my baby niece, Riley, like my infant niece, because I just think it'd be really interesting to see what she does when our back is turned. She's only one, so I would have to like crawl around with her instead of like walking. Um, but also she like gets herself into some crazy situations where she like eats dog food and oh I don't even know today she threw up on me and that was just wrong it was just wrong so I need like a waterproof camera to follow her around with but basically it would just be a day of like a day in the life of a baby which I think would be fun for everyone to watch she'd be really entertaining so our discussion is True tells everyone her father is in Africa, but we learn that that's not the truth at all. Why do you think True lies about where her father is? There's a there's a lot of parts of True's life that aren't classified as normal, which causes her a lot of stress and self-esteem issues. Has there ever been a time in your life that you have lied to see, make your family seem more normal? So, um, I would say... I think True doesn't tell the truth about her father because she's a little ashamed that her father never came back and maybe she also feels a little guilty. Um, but she also kind of realizes that had True and Eddie both been born the same way True was born, their father probably would have stuck around and he really just left because he wasn't ready to handle a kid with special needs, which is awful. Um, but True kind of has this struggle of like, if Eddie was normal, maybe dad would come back. Maybe that's why she's so set on curing Eddie too. Like maybe if Eddie was cured, dad would come back kind of thing. Um, but we know that that's not true. Her dad just wasn't ready to be a father. And if he's not going to be a good father to his kids just as they are, then he's not ready to be a father at all. Um, but I would say, has there ever been a time in your life that you have lied to make your family seem more normal? Um... Yeah, I feel like I have told people that my family was more religious than they actually were, probably. Um, just because for the longest time I had friends that were um, very, very hard set Christians. And this was, I, I've had a couple par parts of my life. This was more when I was younger. Um, but I had friends whose parents went to church every Sunday and, you know, they were part of the, the choir and the youth group and stuff like that to the point where I actually begged my parents to start going to church with me because I don't know why, like, we were a happy family and stuff like that. And I'm not saying you have to go to church to be like, you don't have to go to church. I don't go to church. I classify myself as a Christian. I don't go to church. Um, but like my family, I don't know, I just was really embarrassed that they didn't go to church for some reason. Like, my best friend when I was younger, like, really young, her parents went to church every week and, like, I don't know. So I would just tell them, like, oh, yeah, we go to church every week. Yeah, we go to church every week. Until finally I convinced them to actually go to church every week. But, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Like, don't lie about your family situation, first of all. But second of all, like, even if it's, like, something ridiculous, like, your friends probably don't care. Like, now I'm still kind of friends with that girl. Like, we still talk once in a while and, like... She doesn't go to church every Sunday anymore, and she's very, very, like, I, I never cared if your parents went to church or not. Like, I don't know why you would tell me that they did when they didn't, but I never cared. So, yeah, that, that's that. Um, You guys can talk about it with either, like, your family or your friends, or you can comment it down below if you want, but that's just my weird experience, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, so next time we meet will be on April 9th, and it will be our final time meeting. We will go over our Section 3 questions. 
but yeah, it'll be done. It'll be over. That's so sad. So let's talk out the section three questions and just so you guys have them ahead of time. But of course, they will be linked down below with the Google Doc. And you can click there to have the full page that I read from during these discussion videos. But I am bummed that it's going to be our last one. I did really enjoy this book. So question one for section three, what happens to Eddie at the mall? And what does he tell True he wants? Number two, what does Miggs do to bully Eddie at the party? Number three, who are the two people that call to congratulate True? In her conversation with Dee Dee, what does True admit she finally realized about Eddie? When True realizes she doesn't get a weekly show, what does the cable company offer her instead? Who does True think Dee Dee is? Where does their mom take Eddie and True? How does True end their day at the amusement park? Nine, True is named for a famous author. If you had the choice to be named after someone famous, who would it be? So it wasn't really an activity question for that last one. Um, I couldn't think of a good activity that would kind of go with this, but I just kind of want to know, like, True is named after Gertrude Stein, who's a famous author. So I just want to know if you could name yourself after somebody famous, who would it be? So you can just write a little bit about that. But yeah, so that's it for section two of True Confessions, and I will see you guys next week for our final section. Thanks so much for watching. Bye! Wasn't that a great video? Clearly books make me very happy. Now you can make me happy too. Click the subscribe button to follow my channel. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you think I did good. And the notification bell will let you know when I post new content. Also, follow my Instagram for more book shenanigans.